My name's Eddie Nesta. There you go. Uh, from um, one young man with, with talent <laughs> to, to somebody, he's got no such. He's got no no such thing at all. Uh, point shoes. Well, point shoes have been added to a rest, red list of endangered heritage crafts at risk of uh, being lost to Great Britain. Cobblers are here, you shout. We're one of the UK's last producers or remaining producers of this bespoke uh, ballet shoe is uh, freed from London from where our reporter and his scarf, Harry Lowe, uh, are on his toes outside East London factory this afternoon. Uh, afternoon to you, Harry. Good afternoon, Eddie. I've just stepped through the door, actually. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Right, you know I like a shoe, mate. So tell me, what, what's this story about? Just paint the picture for me. You know I like to see where you are. When I, I can hear the sounds. I want to smell it all. Talk to oh, me. Oh, yes. Well, there are machines to the left of me. There's machines to the right. There's pink ballet shoes just round the corner here. In fact, there's been about three carts of them rolling past every couple of minutes, and it is very very smelly you can imagine that glue if you like that that is used to help bind these shoes so you walk in the front and there's ray who's worked here for 42 years he's cutting the cloth he's using a model of a of a ballet shoe to try and fit the material around it and then you move up and you come to where i am now and you can see the saw being used to cut the correct shape for the sole of the shoe just over to my right, you can see the women who are sewing the seams that go around the outside of these mostly pink shoes. Uh, and then if you walk through into the next room, you'll see where some more of these quarter of a million shoes, which this place makes every year, are bundled together. And I've got some of the dockets here in front of me. And you look at the places that they're off to. This one's going to Finland, Copenhagen, United States and this one's going off to Asia. So, well, as you can imagine, a real range of different places where these shoes are made. Um, but why are we talking about it? Well, the reason for that is because this is on the heritage list of endangered crafts. I've actually got the pamphlet here in front of me. It's a 2021 edition, so this craft of making point shoes was added last year. And I'm delighted to say I've got two women who are going to be able to explain to you exactly what's going on here and why this matters. First of all, I'll introduce Mary Lewis, who's from Heritage Crafts. Good afternoon, Mary. Hi there. Tell us, what is the Heritage Crafts Red List and why has this been added? So it's a bit like the Red List of Endangered Species that you're probably familiar with. It lists crafts in the UK by how likely they are to survive to the next generation. So things on the critically endangered list are things that probably even 10 people still making them in the UK. And give us a flavour. I know cricket balls are no longer made in the UK and sporans are, are at risk. What else apart from point shoes? Uh, well, there's a wide range of crafts on the list, but we have things like wheel writing, um, swill basket making. Um, you put me on the spot now. <laughs> there's uh, lots. <laughs> why is it important that these crafts are preserved in the UK and that we still make them here, in your view? Well, they're a part of our cultural heritage and we think they're as, as important as other aspects of our cultural heritage, like our museums and our art galleries. You can't stick them in a glass case, you can't put them on a wall, but they're here and they're important, so they make up part of who we are. And some people will say we live in a globalised world. It's just the, the accepted practice now that things won't be made where they used to be made. What, what do you say to people who make that argument? Well, I think for point shoes particularly, it's really important that they're connected with the cultural heritage of dance in the UK. So to lose that connection between the craft makers who are making the shoes and the dancers that are using them on our stage would mean that both become less um, less good, I guess, that the, the ballet dancers would have less of a connection to, to their, their equipment that they use in their everyday practice and our culture would suffer. And give us a sense, how endangered would you say point shoemaking is? Uh, extremely endangered. So, although there are quite a few makers here at Freed, they are the only company making them in the UK, so that makes it really quite at risk. Well, that seems like a good time to bring in Sophie Simpson, who is one of the fitters here at Point Shoes. Uh, just give us a sense of what you get up to here and how it all gets put together. Hi, yes, well, here we are in the east end of London and here we make point shoes, which are the shoes that ballet dancers wear when they stand on their toes. So we make them from beginning to end. The raw materials come here. We make the insoles, we make the fabric uppers, and they're all formed by hand by guys that we call point shoe makers. 
And we've met people here already. Ray has been here 42 years. Another lady just sitting over your right shoulder been here 52 years. Uh, give us a sense of the history of this place. Absolutely. Well, Freed was founded in 1929 by a couple, Mr and Mrs Freed. He was a point you maker for a different company. And Mrs Freed was a very, very dynamic, strong woman. And she was a milliner, a point shoe, um, sorry, a hat maker. And they brought a unique idea to making shoes, which today is so normal. They brought the idea of they will fit to any foot, make it for the person that's dancing in them. And with that in mind, I, I noticed that you've actually, although the vast majority of what you make is it's pink in colour, you have actually created some for dancers of colour more recently. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we are, although we're traditional and we're old-fashioned, our shoes are a chameleon. I say, back in 1929, Mr Freed's idea was to give the dancer what they needed then to keep up with the dance world and the choreography and the technical demands. So today, absolutely, dancers are multinational. We have dancers from different ethnic backgrounds. The shoes have to match their skin, and that's what we're here to do. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Mary. Eddie, you've come at a good time because it's actually, as you may well be aware, lunch hour here. So the machines <laughs> have, yes, actually been powered down. They are off now. People are starting to down tools. There's a few gloves coming off here. Uh, bad news for you, though. There are Liverpool and Arsenal flags up on the walls here. I know that won't please you greatly. You should have told me at the beginning we wouldn't have done that feature at all. Harry Lowe, <laughs> thank you very much. BBC Radio London.